I've used it in like English lessons and I've used it in English as my dictionary and thesaurus. Um, I can search stuff on the internet and right. check my answers instead of asking the teacher what the answer is. Um, in English you have to have a reading book, but there's loads of books you can choose from on your iPhone. Oh, yeah. A lot of them come free, but some, some books you have to pay, but they're still quite cheap. There are, of course, all the rest of the school are still in lessons, right. so we can't do, we can't go and use all the computers because they might be IT lessons and all the computers being used up. So, you know, we can use the internet to go on things like BBC Bite Size, but we can't use some learning, which is, you know, a bit annoying, but then BBC Bite Size is still great. Mm -hmm. um, so we can still do the questions and the exercises. And the iPhone students, didn't we know each other before then? They are meeting each other in corridors, swapping applications and pushing them over to each other. And so they've formed their own little community, which is really looking at what applications they're using, how to communicate better. Um, and there's a, there's a sharing dialogue that happened, which I didn't expect, because I'm meeting them once a month and they're giving me data and all the kind of information. But actually, it's what's happening outside of that meeting, which is most progressive. Um, they are sharing ideas now, they are sharing resources. I would anticipate in the next month or so that might calm. I think they've got all the resources they need and then they'll start putting them into practice. Because the iPhone has everything and there's like no limit to the amount of apps you can get because you can get one for nearly every lesson. Even um, in science we have a science textbook and you don't need to bring that around because you can get it online and stuff. I did this thing where I get an unlimited text. Right. So we're, we well, the majority yeah. of us are on it, which is great. So we just text, yeah. so we just text it, if we're texting, it's free, and yeah. we don't have to worry about cost. Well, this is just small, easy to carry around, laptops are like big, bulky. But being small, don't you find it harder to enter data onto something like that? No, because it's like the keypad's like quite, they're all, the buttons are all spaced out and everything, so it's easy to tell which one. Well, I choose an iPhone yeah. because it's more practical, but the only problem is like Adobe Flash um, and stuff, you can't use that on an iPhone, so you can't um, use certain programs like Sam Learning. But other than that, it's so much better. I, I, I couldn't imagine really carrying a laptop around because it's the same sort of weight as carrying books. Yeah. But for a vision, you have to have at least like six books a day. And we don't have to get them all on autography, autography, autology, autography. <laughs> Amanda came to me as a mum's mum came to me because she's very worried that Amanda has the juvenile arthritis, but it's affecting all her limbs. So she's struggling with writing. She's also struggling with walking up the stairs, and also struggling with her back and shoulders with a, uh, a big backpack. So what we've done is we considered a laptop. A laptop, um, unfortunately, even if we got a lightweight one, would add to the weight in the bag. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't actually give her the freedom that we wanted. It would help with the fingers, but then it would add the extra strain to the back and the neck. Yeah. So when Mr. Byrne told us about the iPhone, we thought maybe we should try it with Amanda mm -hmm. and see if that, if that works for her fingers, if she's able to, to use the keys, if it actually cuts down on the amount of writing, and if it also helps her with the volume of things that she needs to carry on the back. Um, Amanda came to me, I think, about three weeks after the trial started, and she said amazing things have been happening. Um, the swelling in her fingers have started just to, to reduce. Um, she can bend her thumbs for the first time in a very long time. And she's also found that she doesn't really need her glass books anymore. Because what she does is she does all her word processing on, on her iPhone. She takes pictures of the board instead of having to take notes, so she can then print that off, put it in her books or in her files, or put it on her computer at home and study it at home. So she doesn't need to take notes, she can do all her writing on the phone. She then emails it either to herself or she emails it to her teacher straight away. It's actually way faster. Mm. Even, really? even if I've got my new laptop, because I got a brand new laptop around two months ago. Right. Even and for me the iPhone is like five times quicker as the laptop. Mm.
And even on that wireless network, if I get 30 kids in one classroom all logging on at the same time, you can be sure you are 15 minutes into your lesson before everything is working effectively. For example, our Down syndrome student who uses a laptop at the moment, but a laptop can be fiddly. Um, right. A lot of setup time, a lot of getting into one thing, getting into another thing, and then the network doesn't work very well. So then everything is, is, is kind of um, taken away and she has to go back to paper. Because you have to have wire, you have to be connected to a wireless um, router. So we can do work in order to use the iPod touch. Whenever we want to. Whereas like I can get it out in the middle of nowhere and just use it. Like internet will be handy and everything. It might not be as good as say if I got like, if I stand next to like say a modem or a router and mm -hmm. Wi-Fi was there. But like with an iPod touch. Like, if you want internet, you have to be in your house, you have to be connected to well, the... Kind of like in a coffee shop, that's wireless. And then you might yeah. start be using the computer. Whereas this, I could just get out on the bus and be like, yeah, I'm on BBC, or I could just get it out, like, anywhere, really. Yeah, that's what's really nice. But what we were really eager to do is not to take learning into the four walls of a classroom. That actually, once you've started your studies, you can do this sort of study anywhere, anytime. Take it on the bus, take it on the tube, take, take, wherever you need to do your studies, you now have that ability. As well as that, we've got 1,200 kids, they all want to use computers at some point. By people using their mobile technologies, it stops me spending 60 grand a year on renewing my computers when these kids bring it in on their pockets. Revision can sometimes be really kind of hard to fit in and I'm either carrying loads and loads of books around wherever I go and, and trying to find time to put in some revision somewhere. Whereas if I have, it's, it's been amazing because I have all of my revision resources open and all the apps as well which you can get which are specifically related to it and have an internet wherever you go, it's really important. It's really good. Yeah.